Yo. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Elden Ring. Obviously, everybody's been hearing about it and how great it is and everything. So I just kind of wanted to give my perspective as a first-time Souls game player. And someone who primarily only plays multiplayer games as of late. Um, I just wanted to talk about how great it was, to be honest. It was one of the best games I've ever played. Um, just how large this open world is, every aspect of exploration that you have, it's like it feels endless when you first start and when you start to discover there's more and more to the map that's originally hidden when you start, it's like wow there's a whole nother section like every time and there, that happens several times throughout, it's kind of insane how large the world is if you're trying to explore every part of it which I was on my first playthrough um, it's just an insane amount of content not only just how big the world is, but how much, how densely packed it is, especially compared to a lot of other open world games. I feel like there's a practically, that just keeps going forever. It's like, oh wow, there's another catacomb, another cave, another boss who's just in the middle of nowhere, another ever jail. It's like, there's just so much content. At first it was almost overwhelming for me, but as I continued playing, I started to appreciate that because I got a lot more playtime out of the game. Um, and let me just say that I did play the game for about 150 hours, give or take. Um, I did my first run, I did a complete, I tried to 100% everything I could, um, you know, explore every, every jail, catacomb, cave, whatever. And then on my second and third playthroughs on New Game Plus 1 and Plus 2, I kind of rushed through, well, not really rushed, I just didn't go out of my way to do every little thing. I would go pick up the weapons that I wanted to, you know, potentially dual wield, and I also, um, you know, obviously I did all of the major optional bosses each time, including Melania and Moog and all those guys. Um, so I, I didn't, I definitely wasn't a completionist run on the second two runs. But I did still, you know, fight every boss. I didn't skip through straight to the end or anything. But um, even that took a fair amount of time. I would say about a hundred of my hours were on the first playthrough, and the other fifty were probably on the the last two playthroughs. Um, anyway, so just each uh, several times throughout each playthrough, I did. I just you know, I'd be like, oh, like this sounds like a really cool weapon. I'll respec and try it out. And it's just insane how differently each play style is. It makes the game a lot more exciting if you get bored or if you want to mix things up. It's just really interesting to be able to do that. I know in a lot of games it's like essentially you get a better weapon and it's just a bigger number. It's not necessarily a different play style or different. nothing is really different about it. It didn't feel like that with Elden Ring. I felt like there was a genuine difference in play styles depending on the weapons that you're using, which I thought was really cool, and it kept things interesting. Um, I really, I would say probably my favorite thing about the game, and having not played any of the other Souls games like I mentioned, is that it was actually a genuine challenge. Um, typically, I don't like to choose to get frustrated by things, so if I have the option, I'll probably just play it on normal mode. But the fact that this game, you don't have that option, I see as a good thing. I know that's kind of a debated topic, um, but I think it's a good thing because it contributes to a shared experience between you and your friends, whatever. Um, it just makes it more interesting to have to learn how to play the game rather than just kind of brute force your way through, which you can still do. Um, it just takes a little effort, and I feel like you still kind of have to have a general idea of some skill in the game to figure out how to beat a lot of the bosses, particularly the harder ones. It feels like you're really accomplishing something when you beat a boss that you were stuck on for, you know, an hour or whatever. It feels like it's just really rewarding gameplay, and it's really punishing when you mess up, which I like. I want to be able to hone my skill in a game and it's immediately apparent whether I'm you know, winning or losing the fight. And in a lot of ways, in other games, I feel like you can mess up a, a whole lot and it doesn't really affect your experience because they're just so forgiving. It's almost too accessible that takes away the challenge. 
Another thing I really enjoyed about the game was actually just how incredible the storyline was. Um, <laughs> that is with a caveat, however. Uh, you pretty much learn nothing about the storyline as you play the game, unless you're intentionally trying to discover things related to the storyline by reading, you know, flavor texts on items and inspecting certain statues or whatever in the game, which I, I do admit is pretty annoying. Um, I would say 98% of the story content that I learned about the game was all from other YouTubers. Um, it was just kind of goofy when games do that i think but after reading all of the stuff that you know when the youtubers laid it out flat for me it's actually super interesting and i'm curious to see if they'll do any more sort of content with that with such an in-depth storyline and it's it almost feels like it's kind of a waste that they have such a good storyline but don't really utilize it it's it's like every enemy almost has like a background in the game and you don't really realize the significance of who they are or why they're there until you kind of in hindsight start to well if you do it how i did anyway i didn't really look at the lore until after i already beat the game because i didn't want any spoilers so while i was playing it i didn't really recognize that until after my first playthrough and sort of piggybacking off of that i absolutely loved the boss designs in this game um, I know Souls games are kind of known for that, but like I said, I'm not familiar with them. But just the total uniqueness relative to other games that I've played is quite impressive. And how you have to learn, you know, their movesets, different attack styles in order to beat them is just a truly rewarding type of game, I think. As far as what I didn't like about the game, they're more just minor nitpicks than anything. Um, just little things like how a lot of armors will have special effects but uh, to my knowledge I don't know how you tell that other than looking it up in the wiki so um, I know some like some helmets will give you like you know plus three dexterity or whatever and you can see that but I'm talking more like the white mask where it gives you an enhanced blood damage or whatever it does uh, yeah I would have no idea if I didn't watch you know videos on builds and whatnot which I kind of, kind of find annoying. I hate when you have to go to external sources in order to fully understand sort of mechanics of the game. Another small nitpick would be just timers on the buffs that you receive. Um, for example, if you use like a an incantation that raises your attack power or something, I would just like to know how long I have to use it, <laughs> but it just kind of shows an icon and then it disappears. So. Like I said, it's something very minor, but it's just a mild annoyance, I would say. I already kind of mentioned this one, but just access to the storyline I find a little bit convoluted. Um, you don't really get it through playing the game unless you're seeking that out intentionally. And even then, I feel like it's practically impossible for a normal person who's just going to you know, play the game once and not fully you know make content on it or anything crazy um i just don't see how they would ever get the storyline without seeking external sources which i think is kind of a missed opportunity and lastly i feel that the multiplayer system that's in place is a little convoluted and hard to understand as a new player um i it took me a minute to fully grasp what was going on, what all these fingers and finger remedies and all this meant. It's just, I feel like it's unnecessarily complicated and a little intimidating as a brand new player. Um, you know, obviously as I played it further on, I fully understood it, but just that starting bit was confusing. And I feel like if I didn't, if I wasn't playing with a friend who was already somewhat familiar with the system, it would have uh, taken us quite a while to figure out what to do to actually play together. But you know, like I said, these are all just very minor gripes that don't really matter in the end. Overall, the game was absolutely phenomenal, and I think it's probably one of my favorite games ever. In fact, it's so good, it makes me want to go back and play some of FromSoft's previous games. I'm really interested in trying out, you know, Sekiro, possibly the Dark Souls. I don't know if those will play well for me though, just because whenever I play an old ga older game like that, after I already 
having played a newer improved version of a game i feel like it doesn't age very well kind of a had to be there to love it type situation like when it first came out you know but we'll see maybe i'll give the old ones a shot but i'm still definitely interested in like sekiro just because that's relatively new compared to some of the older games and despite the game not being you know full-fledged multiplayer co-op i still played it at the same time as my buddies so we sort of had you know we shared our experiences and you know told each other tips and tricks and oh try out this weapon or, you know, on certain bosses, try certain strategies type situation. So it was really enjoyable to, you know, watch them rage on the bosses that you had just fought prior to that. Or see them struggle when you thought a boss was really easy or vice versa. Uh, you know, you struggled on a boss forever and they just beat it on their first attempt. Is sort of a competitive aspect to it, which I enjoyed. I've already recommended the game to several of my friends, and so far everybody has enjoyed it. I have talked to a few people who aren't fans of it, and based on what they've been saying, I feel like it's just because they haven't really given it a true shot to learn the mechanics of the game. You know, the ones that immediately quit after, you know, 20 minutes of playing because they couldn't figure out how the combat system worked, and you know, how to dodge correctly, or block or parry or whatever it's just they didn't take the time to understand how the game works because you kind of have to play a little differently than most games i feel like this game you're very defensive kind of acting based around what the boss does whereas in i would say most modern games it's all about what you're doing and to just try to brute force overpower the boss in this kind of game it just doesn't work well so i feel like they didn't really take the time to uh, adapt to the game, I would say. But to each their own. I guess it's not for everybody. But yeah, I mean, overall, I would give the game a solid 10 out of 10, 100 times over. I'm really looking forward to any DLC that they might put out. I will be the first in line to buy it. And any future games from from FromSoft, that's kind of hard to say. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm totally interested in what they're doing from here on out. It has made me a fan of them immediately, and I'm looking forward to what they have in store for us for the future. Let me know if you guys have had a similar experience with the game, or if you've been on the fence about trying it, or, you know, maybe if you had totally opposite experience and you hated the game. I'd like to hear about it in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe if you want to hear some more monotone rambling for another 10 minutes in the future. And hit the like button if you want to help out your boy. And I will see you guys in the next video.